Shalom, friends, and happy Sukkot. Thanks for joining us for the Church at Lion of Judah Sunday, October 20th service. This week, Pastor Matthew Hartman brings us this very special message titled, Sukkot, the Eternal Celebration. We hope this message finds you well and continues to bless and inspire you and your family. Like to come join us next week? We're at 5732 Douglas Road in Toledo, Ohio. Service times are Sunday, 1030 a.m. and Friday at 7 p.m. Like to join us in support of our ministry and continuing world outreach? Head over to www.lionofjudatoledo.org. Click on the Giving tab. Fill out the info below. Then click Submit. Thanks so much for joining us on this very special week. Now on to the message. Coat is the plural form of the word sukkah. So this shelter, this booth that you see that we have built out of here and wood when you pulled in, that's right in the grass here. Did you see that when you pulled in, Sage? The structure down here, right? It's called a sukkah. In plural form, it's called sukkot. And that's the, the Hebrew for tabernacle or booth. And again, in most of your Bibles, it's called the Feast of Booths. And we can even read in the New Testament that Jesus himself was celebrating the Feast of Booths. And it was on the last great day of the feast, which is a big eruption when they pour out the water. Jesus stopped the procession and the joy and cried out with a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, come to me, and he will have rivers of living water flowing from his innermost being and if you don't understand the connection of this holiday and that moment that Jesus interrupted well you may not fully understand why Jesus said what he said and you know the Pharisees kept asking him to tell them plainly that he was the Messiah and he was telling them plainly because they knew the language that he was speaking he was saying I am the Messiah when he said come to me I am I am the water that you're pouring out on the altar I am the I am God he was saying and I am the Messiah so when you have a greater uh, understanding of your faith and where it comes from and the foundations of it it strengthens uh, strengthens who you are and I make this case too that uh, you know I'm not talking about salvation I'm talking about relationship, and in order to be in relationship with somebody, you need to know who they are and where they come from. I can tell you a lot of things about my wife, and she can tell you a lot of things about me, and if we didn't know these things about each other, our relationship would be pretty weak. I know that she was born in Plano, Texas. I know that she's 40 years old. I know her birthday is April 14th. 1984 she was born I, you know I know her favorite color I know her her favorite song I know all these things about her and because of that our relationship is strong so if you refuse to know the who Jesus is or where he comes from your relationship with him can't possibly be that strong and unfortunately uh, some out of ignorance and some out of tradition a lot of the western church today is denying these beautiful holy days of the lord uh, because they don't understand it and therefore they're missing out on going deeper into a relationship with god and with who he is so you know that i'm not making this up bruce alluded to it elder bruce he's an elder here he's a teacher here uh, so you know that we're not making it up those of you that have your Bibles or your Bible app on your phone, I would like you to open it up to Leviticus chapter 23, verse 1. Uh, we stand for the initial reading of the Word. If you don't mind standing for this and honoring the Word of God, that would be awesome. And I know the Lord is blessed by it. I'll give you a moment to get to that uh, part in your Bibles again if you have them. If you don't, then write this down and examine it for yourself later. Be a Berean. What did the Bereans do? They heard the word from Paul, and then they went and studied the word and to see that he was telling the truth. So what my Bible says is, and I'll start in verse 1, the Lord spoke again to Moses saying, if you ever, <laughs> there's a, he says that a lot. There's a, there's a joke in, in uh, Judaism. This is called a Torah scroll. And during the Torah reading, the rabbi was making a point, and he lost his spot. And uh, he said, where was I? And they said, 
You were at the port, part where the Lord said to Moses. There's a lot of that in the Bible. But anyways, verse 2. Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, The Lord's, capital O, capital R, capital, capital D, the Lord's, Yahweh, yod heh vav -Heh, His appointed times are these. They're my appointed times, he says, to wit, times which you shall proclaim as holy convocations, my appointed times are these. And then he starts out with the Sabbath, with the Shabbat, and then he lists the six other holy days. There's three in the spring, and there's three in the fall. The spring holy days are Passover, also called Pesach in Hebrew, and then there is the Feast of Weeks, or Shavuot in Hebrew, or as you might hear it today in the Western Church, Pentecost. And then, in, yes, the, the Jewish people were celebrating Pentecost 1,500 years before the Holy Spirit was given in the book of Acts in Jerusalem. The third holy day in the spring is, uh, the, the, well, there's the Feast of First Fruits and then the Feast of Pentecost. And then in the fall, we have Rosh, what's today called Rosh Hashanah, but biblically is Yom Truah, the Feast of Trumpets, which we celebrated a few weeks ago. And then there is the Yom Kippur, which we celebrated last weekend. And now Sukkot, which began Wednesday at sundown, because according to the Bible, there was night and then there was day, one day. I hope I didn't say too much and you all were able to get all that. Please be seated. The point I want to make is this isn't a Jewish holiday. This isn't only for the Hebrew people, but this is God's appointed day. He made an appointment with you and I to meet at certain times of the year. And if God makes an appointment with us, we ought to show up. He's probably got something really foundational and important that he wants to show to us or say to us. And uh, so we should be prepared and we should be ready to listen. So we're going to go, uh, the, I've called this uh, the harvest and the eternal celebration. This is a time of celebration like none other. The ancient rabbis called this the holiday. And it, was, it, go, it lasts for seven days plus a day. And it is a time of rejoicing and giving thanks. And as Bruce alluded to, it, it's one of the things that we're giving thanks to the Lord for it, that parallels Israel. Israel was in the wilderness for 40 years, wandering in temporary shelters called sukkahs, or sukkot in plural, and God kept them and provided for them with manna from heaven, and quail would blow in from the east. He made water flow from a rock. Right? He did all of these things to keep them. He protected them from already established nations that had mighty armies. He took a, a, a ragtag people that were slaves for 400 years and made them mighty and powerful and wandered they had them wander through the wilderness eventually entering into the promised land and he told them when they when you get into the promised land i want you to celebrate this sukkot this time this feast and remember that i kept you when you were naked exposed and vulnerable to the to the atmosphere and to your enemies around you and how that relates to us today is you are in a temporary shelter you can't cause yourself to grow an inch you can't cause one of the hairs on your head to go gray. You are vulnerable. You need God's provision, and you need his protection. Spiritually, we are open to demonic forces, but God keeps us with an angelic host, his angelic armies, and the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you have delivered us with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, and that you are keeping us while we are walking in this wilderness called life. Can we agree that this is a wilderness right now? It can be tough, but God keeps us. And one day, we're going to shed this temporary tent, and we're going to be given a permanent tent. So we have a reason to celebrate now, we'll have a reason to celebrate then, and we'll have a reason to celebrate when the new heavens and the new earth come, and the tabernacle of God dwells among men. It will be an eternal celebration when the, so all of the fall, all of the feast days 
they are shadows and types of Yeshua's ministry on earth, either in his first coming or in his second coming. The spring days he fulfilled in his first coming. The fall holy days he has fulfilled in part and will fulfill completely in his second coming. And how we long for his second coming. So one of the things that Israel is commanded to do is build this temporary shelter like this. And unless you're a first uh, a, a, a native born Israelite you, you, you don't have to live in one but if you're a native born Israelite then it's commanded that you should live in it for seven days and then this is called a lulav which we'll read here in a minute about the, these are the species that the Lord this one's got a little age on it so some of the leaves are, are missing out they're up here but that's okay and this is called an ectrog and you're to take this in your right hand this in your left hand and you're to start east and, and give thanks to the Lord for his goodness, for his provision and you're to do it around all sides of your body, you know north, east, south, west Dr. Tom Bauer is going to come and lead us out to the sukkah after uh, service, there's a traditional Hebrew prayer uh, that you can pray and he's going to lead you through that I encourage you to go out and participate in this, it's a beautiful uh, you know, a beautiful thing and the Lord's going to meet you out there in that booth in a, in a special way in that sukkah it, again it's an unfortunate thing that a lot of the the church today uh you know isn't celebrating that let, let me take a step back actually because i had mentioned to you earlier that some of you have been celebrating this in a way and you haven't even known it and the, what it is that you've been celebrating that is closely related to sukkot that you don't know is called thanksgiving Thanksgiving is a derivative of Sukkot. When the Puritans came over from Europe, they celebrated Sukkot, and it ended up morphing in today what's called Thanksgiving. Now the day, again, has been messed up through the tradition of men. So we celebrate Thanksgiving on the third, uh, or the what, the last Thursday of November. And, uh, you know, but according to God's Hebrew calendar, he said to celebrate Sukkot on the seventh, the fifteenth day of the seventh month, we are in the seventh month. The fifteenth day began Wednesday at sundown, and uh, you know now we're and it, it ends uh, Wednesday at sundown, and then Thursday will be the last great day, the eighth day, right, or ends of Tuesday. Anyways, seven days plus a day, and the last day is uh, is a, a rest. So it's called the first day of of Sukkot is a rest. It's a Shabbat. It's a time to do nothing. The eighth day is a rest. And I think I was praying and talking to the Lord about this, and he gave me an insight. It's like, he's so good. How many of us take a week vacation, and we run, and then we need another day to rest from our vacation? <laughs> and we throw a big party, you know. And he knew that we would need an extra day to rest. So he said, you're going to celebrate Sukkot for seven days, and then the eighth day is going to be a Shabbat. It's going to be a rest for you. So relax. That's what that's what we're called to do. Now again, here and now, uh, I, I just I connected it a moment ago. Let's look at the scripture for it. On exactly the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the crops of the land, you shall celebrate the feast of the Lord for seven days, with a rest on the first day and a rest on the eighth day. Uh, he's giving us a lot of the Lord gives us a lot of information on how we should celebrate Sukkot. Uh, he doesn't do that with all the holy days. Yom Truah, the Feast of Trumpets, if you were here a few weeks ago, he gives very little about it. He says, blow the trumpets and remember. And uh, we have to do the digging. But this particular day, he gives a lot of information about how to celebrate it. It must be important. If God devotes a lot of his word to something, it must be important. It's a very important holiday. It's interesting that in Jewish tradition today, Rosh Hashanah or Yom Truah is actually like the Super Bowl of the feast and has actually gained more traction. But the reality, as I alluded to a moment ago, is in ancient times, Sukkot was the great holiday. It was the great feast. It was the one that capped the year. And it's asking God to send, thanking Him for the previous provision and the harvest and to ask him to send rain for the next year that we may have provision and harvest and protection. He says, now on the first day you shall take for yourselves 
foliage of the beautiful trees. This is it. And branches and boughs of leafy trees and willows of the brook. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. It's a feast of rejoicing. What do we do when we gather together for Thanksgiving? We're supposed to rejoice. We're supposed to think of things that we're thankful for and rejoice on those things. The Lord is saying for seven days, get together, rejoice, go out into this booth, wave this thing around. Remember that you're waving it around because I caused it to grow and it's now in your hand and it's going to fill your bellies. A lot of times, uh, traditional Jews, they'll take this etrog, it's like a lemon, smells wonderful, I love the way they smell, and they'll make jelly out of them when they're done uh, with Sukkot. We set them up and they just shrivel up. And I don't know, maybe one of these days we should make jelly out of it. It would probably be good. But you rejoice before the Lord for seven, Lord your God, for seven days. You shall thus celebrate it as a feast to the Lord. As a feast to who? Who does this day belong to? Is it the Jewish holiday? No, it's God's appointed day. It's his feast, and we should celebrate it to him, right? For seven days in a year, it shall be a perpetual statue throughout your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Perpetually, this should go on. What does perpetual mean? She keeps on going, right? That means it doesn't stop. It should be year after year after year after year. You shall perpetually celebrate this. And as we'll see in a minute, this is the only holy day, the only holiday, the only pointed day of God's that we're going to be celebrating into the millennial kingdom. We'll get there in a minute. I know. Woo. Say it again. Woo. It's good. And this, again, is how it relates to us today. We are in these temporary shelters called these, these bodies. And we are prone to accident. We are prone to destruction. They are decaying. You're right. And you are my knee. So I'm not jumping around today as much as I was on Friday. Because I woke up the next day like I was paying for it. My knee. You know, no more. I couldn't run up the pews today. But I did Friday. Whatever. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50. Now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does like... So Israel <coughs> was getting moved into the promised land, and they were going to be given temporary or permanent homes. But at this time, they're in a, in, a, in a temporary structure. Right now, we're going to be going to the promised land, and we're going to be given... Uh, a, renewed bodies, right? Incorruptible bodies, perfect bodies. Now we're, we're not, but we're going to receive it. And we're going to celebrate the Lord for it. So he says we can't inherit God's kingdom. We can't inherit the promised land in the perishable body. Because behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised and perishable, and we will be changed. What is the last trumpet? The last trumpet, we just celebrated it a few weeks ago. Rosh Hashanah, Yom Truah, the Feast of Trumpets, the Feast of Blowing. We remember that God revealed himself once at Mount Sinai with a trumpet from heaven, and he's going to reveal himself again through his son with a trumpet from heaven. And then... We're going to get our new bodies. We're going to be moved into the promised land, and we're no longer going to be susceptible to the enemy's attacks, to decay, and all of those things. We're going to have a, a glorified body, and we're going to have it for a reason, because we've got a lot of work to still do. In the twinkle of an eye, the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised and perishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable must put on the imperishable, and this mortal must put on immortality. But when the perishable will have put on the imperishable, and this mortal will have put on immortality, then will come about the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. 
But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. We have work to do now. We'll have work to do then. Another name for Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, is the Feast of Ingathering. There is a ripe harvest right now, and we have a work to do. We've been given this body to do a work now, and we're going to be given a better body to do a work then. But we have a work to do now, and I say to you, don't, don't, don't. Because of that, therefore, my beloved brethren, because you're going to get a renewed body, stay steadfast and movable and abounding in the work of the Lord. And the work of the Lord is to fill up God's kingdom to bring Jesus' inheritance. We all have work to do. Let's do it today. It is a harvest time. A tradition during this time is to invite aliens and strangers into the booth and have a meal with them. Ush, I'm going to try to say it. Ush Pinzim. Ush Pinzim. And it simply is a, a, like a Yiddish term saying you're inviting a stranger into your booth and showing them hospitality, showing them the light of God. And this is the only time of the year that Hebrew people and Israelites would invite aliens and strangers into their houses. You know, normally they stayed at bay from, from the Goyim, from the Gentiles. But this is the time of the year that we're commanded to be hospitable and shine the light of God. This is part of the work that we have to do. Do you not say, this is Yeshua, there are yet four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields. They, they, they are white for harvest. Already he who reaps is receiving wages and is gathering fruit for life eternal. Listen, if those of you or if you're sharing, there are eternal rewards to be had in the kingdom to come. In the millennial reign, that's going to make a difference for you. You can be standing on the sidelines watching the procession, or you can be a part of what's happening when God establishes kingdom right here on this earth for a thousand years. And what you do with what you have now, you will reap a reward for then. God has given each one of us a sphere of influence, a place that we can talk to, people that we encounter every day. And he's given us a tongue to be able to speak his word and to share the gospel with those around us. And I promise you, you will, you will gather fruit. What you're doing now will, gra will gather fruit for eternity so that he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. So you may rejoice. Right, right, we sow... Jesus comes back with his angels and reaps. And because of what we sowed and what he reaps, we get to rejoice together in the kingdom to come. There's a re an eternal reward, and we, we discount it often, I believe, in our Western church. We just say, oh, no, 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 I just want to get to heaven and just be with Jesus. And that's great. But, man, you can store up an account. Jesus said, store up treasures in heaven where moth and rust won't eat them, where thieves can't steal it. It'll be in a, a forever reward for you. He says, not even a cup of cold water, Mary, given in my name, is without reward. Can you imagine when you bring somebody to righteousness, when you bring somebody to salvation, the reward that is given? One of the things I like to do when we share the gospel out on the streets is we take, we take bottles of water. I, would you like a cold water? Yes. I hand it to them. And I say, we're out sharing the love of Jesus. This is in Jesus' name. Is there anything we can pray about with you? And we use this as an opportunity to bring the gospel to people. Usually people will take prayer. You pray with them. And then you end it in the name of Jesus and ask them, so what do you think of Jesus? Now you've already built this relationship. Prayer is an intimate thing. You've built this relationship with them. And generally they're willing to and ready to have a conversation. Let them share and lead them down that path to know who Jesus is for real. For in this case, the saying is true. 
one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Jesus walked to the cross. The disciples took so much, uh, uh, you know, rejection. And, you know, they were all martyred except for John. They, they did all this labor. These ones that went before us did all this labor to make a way for us to be able to share the gospel. And, uh, you know, so walk in their labor and receive from them. This is Yeshua said this, Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to render to every man according to what, and woman, what he has done. There's a reward for you. Or you'll, you'll, you'll experience, I believe, fully, that you'll experience the disappointment that you could have had more. Just as you'll experience the reward, you'll experience the disappointment that you could have had more. Now, we'll be full of hope, and we won't have envy. We won't envy others, so it won't be like what we feel now when we see others get a reward and we don't. But I think you'll realize, man, I could have had more. This is a time of harvest. This is a time of thanksgiving, and this is a time of harvest. We have work to do. Let's get busy. Amen? Now, now let's talk about the millennial reign. This is in the Bible. This is, this is to come. There is a harvest to come. There is a millennial reign. Yeshua HaMashiach is coming back. He's going to pick us up. We're going to go up. We're going to sit with him and have a feast called the Marriage Supper of the Lamb. And then directly after that, in chapter 19 of Revelation, we see that Jesus is coming back on a white horse with an army clothed in white behind him. Guess who that army of heaven will be clothed in white behind him? It will be the bride that he just married. And we're going to have to come back with him and be a part of wiping out all his enemies. And he's going to reestablish his perfect order and rule on this earth. When God created the earth, he had in the end in mind. And he began, he created it, the beginning, with the end in mind. What was the beginning? Adam and Eve with God in perfect harmony, walking in the cool of the day. Everything was good and perfect. There was no death. There was no sin. We messed it up. God wasn't shocked by that. He knew it was going to happen. But he's going to bring this creation back to perfection. And he's going to do that for a thousand years in something called the millennial reign. You can read about it. It's all through the Bible. And we're going to look at an example of it here in a minute. And the, Jesus is worth his, he's, he's worth his inheritance. It's not just heaven that we're going to fill. We're going to fill this earth for a thousand years with, body, with people with resurrected bodies. We're going to have a lot of work to do, a lot of uh, 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 thought processes to correct, a lot of governmental work to do. Can you imagine? We're going to be meeting with Jesus, and he, those of us who are faithful, what we've been given now, are going to meet with him. And he says, I'm going to give you ten cities to rule over, or five cities to rule over. I'm going after ten, guys. I'm going after ten. I'd be happy with five or three, but I'm going after ten. And we're going to go and have a meeting with Yeshua, with Jesus, and he's going to say, okay, Dolores, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go back to, you know, to this place on the earth. And I want you to start establishing this and put in place these people and that and do this. And you're going to leave with, with papers and documents from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and go, I am an ambassador of Christ and I am sent here to restore order to this place. And you're going to begin to restore order for a thousand years. He's going to perfect this. And then there will be the new heaven and the new earth. So listen, if you want to just... Jesus to come back so you can get out of the work and toil? No, there's more work to do. He's coming back to reestablish his kingdom right here on the earth. There is more work to do. But you will be given a perfect body, a perfect mind. Satan will be bound for a thousand years. He won't be messing with your head anymore. And his demons, you'll have perfectly clear thoughts. 
You won't be lazy or unmotivated. The things of your life won't be wounding you anymore. You won't be insecure about yourself. You'll be very secure, and you'll be partnering with Jesus Christ, with Yeshua HaMashiach, building his kingdom right here on earth for a thousand years. Again, this is the only feast that is talked about that we will be celebrating until the millennial reign. And I'm going to show you again in a minute that it's going to happen again when the new heavens and the new earth come. Zechariah chapter 14 is all about the end days, the end times, the day of the Lord, and what it's going to be like after he comes back. And this is at verse, verse 16. Then it will come about that any who are left of all the nations that went against Jerusalem will go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to celebrate the Feast of Booths, also known as Sukkot, also known as the Feast of Tabernacles. We are going to be in our glorified bodies going year to year to celebrate the Feast of Booths with Jesus Christ, with Yeshua, with the Father in Jerusalem. What that's going to look like, I don't know. There's going to be a lot of people filling up Jerusalem. It's going to be amazing. I think you'd be more excited about it. I'm excited. And here's the beautiful thing about it is those of us who know about it, we're going to be teachers. We're going to be instructors. There's those that don't know about it. Wednesday I had a, I talked to a couple of, of pastors, so-called teachers, men of God. I shouldn't say so-called, but uh, maybe uh, without the ability to learn. And I said, are you guys excited about the celebration tonight? And one of them, they were like, what? And one of them brought up the Yankees sweeping, I don't know, the series, I don't know about baseball. And a baseball score. And I said, no, no, I'm talking about the biblical feast of Sukkot. And they kind of mocked it and brought baseball back up again. And I, I, something rose up in me, and I rebuked them pretty harshly and said, you guys call yourselves teachers, pastors, and men of God, and you know more about baseball games and scores than you do about the Word of God. Like, it's a scary thing. Now, again, I'm not talking about salvation. I'm talking about relationship. My relationship with Yeshua, I know who he is. I know who, where he come from. And he, he's, therefore, going to make me an instructor. And you know today about this holiday Sukkot. And you're going to go out and you're going to wave this lulav. Every year I select somebody, Dr. Tom is, is always one of them, to lead you guys out into the sukkah to walk you through the Hebrew because you may not know it, you may not understand it, and to wave the lulav and how that works and what that looks like. Guess what? Those of us that know about this holiday are going to be instructors when we go up every year to celebrate this in Jerusalem there's going to be people showing up that don't know, that said, man, I didn't realize he was a Jewish man. I know I kept hearing about it, but I didn't think it would matter. I didn't think it would count. Paul wrote that one, that one verse that said there's no longer Jew or Gentile. So I just thought like that it all hinged on that. And they're going to be shocked that no, like these, the, that we're still celebrating Sukkot. And we're going to be teaching them and walking them through how to celebrate this holiday. And I'm excited about that. I love teaching now. It's going to be awesome then because I'm going to be like perfect in it. Not like I am now. Or sometimes at the end of the day, I don't really know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Verse 18, if the family of Egypt does not go, oh, wait, let me back up, 17. And it will be that whichever of the families of the earth does not go up to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, there will be no rain on them. If the family of Egypt does not go up or enter, then no rain will fall on them. It will be the plague of, with, with which the Lord smites the nations who do not go up to celebrate the Feast of Booze. We're going to be commanded to go to Jerusalem year after year in the millennial reign and celebrate it. And those who didn't know about it, those who refused to do it, they, they'll experience drought and hardship. And it'll be their own doing and their own choosing. They won't any longer be able to blame it on the devil or blame it on ignorance or blame it on anything except for their own, except for their own issues. I'm excited about the millennial kingdom. It's a big big deal. 
But now, let's look at the new heavens and the new earth. Again, this is called the celebration continues. There's going to be a celebration. And, and even in the harvest time, even in the millennial reign, there's going to be a time of sharing the gospel. There's going to be a time of another ingathering. There's going to be a time of another reaping of a harvest of the nations for the Lord. You can read about it yourself. Chapter 21 of the book of Revelations, there are two resurrections. I want to be a part of the first resurrection because you don't have to worry about the lake of fire. You don't have to worry about judgment. The second death is the second resurrection. And it's there where you'll be judged. There will be another opportunity for a harvest. There's a lot of work to do. When Jesus comes back, the work isn't over. Oh, but it'll get there. It'll get there. But there's a lot of work to do. So don't be praying that Jesus comes back just to take you out of work and hardship and labor. Because there's going to be more work and hardship and labor. But instead, let's partner with him now and with his spirit and begin that work and labor to bring him his inheritance. Therefore, we do not lose heart, but though the outer man is decaying, yet the inner man is being renewed day by day. For momentary light afflictions is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are not seen are temporal. Things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. We keep our eyes fixed and focused on the eternal thing to come. There is an eternal hope set before us, an eternal celebration. And when we keep our eyes fixed on those things, we're able to say that what we're going through today is a temporary and light affliction. That we can't even measure it to the good things that are to come. It says the eye has not seen, ear has not heard of the good things that the Lord has in store for you and I. He has good things for him. Listen to this, Revelation 21, the new heaven and the new earth. So we are celebrating and commanded to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles now, perpetually. We'll be celebrating it after Jesus returned for a thousand years, going to Jerusalem together, establishing, reestablishing his perfect order. And once things are made right, then there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And this is what John wrote about the new heaven and the new earth. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men. The final and perfect tabernacle of God will come and be among men. And he will dwell among them, and they shall be his people. And God himself will be among them. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And there will, be no long, there will no longer be any death. There will no longer be any mourning or crying or pain. The first things have passed away. And he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write, for these words are faithful and true. He's going to wipe every tear from your eye. You'll experience no more pain. And you'll be celebrating continually the Feast of Tabernacles, remembering when you were in these temporary bodies and things hurt and you had issues and you had problems and you had hardships and you had aches and you had pains. And then you're going to remember in the millennial reign those who still denied God and it's going to hurt you and those who were still hurting people. And then he's going to come and there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth and everything's going to be perfect and you're no longer going to see any pain or experience any disappointment and things are going to be perfect and we're going to be celebrating with God the, the tabernacle of God forever and ever and he is going to be with us this is an eternal celebration an eternal celebration and we should begin celebrating it now and we should continue to celebrate it until forever forever